Hello, Athens. Welcome to the Classic City Business Podcast. Our mission, to connect our community to the local business owner. If you love Athens and love supporting the people behind our businesses, then you're in the right place. We get to know the people behind the sign. Some are legends, others are on their way. You're listening to the Classic City Business Podcast with your friend, your host, all-around great guy and owner of Generations Commercial Cleaning, John Gluck. So get ready, buckle up, hang on, here we go. Part two of our conversation with John Theus. Georgia, didn't he? I mean, he oh, yeah. loved Georgia. Yeah, he still does. I know it was hard for him to, especially, I mean, we, while we, um, my senior year was a little tough. We won 10 games that year. We averaged 10 games every year. My freshman year, we were SEC's champions in a play away from being in the national championship. And I'll go ahead and say being national champions against Notre Dame. So There were he, nine teams in the SEC that would have beat Notre Dame <laughs> that year. That was such a heartbreak. And it was right down to the, the wire. Let me say this in defense of Coach Rick, if I may interrupt at this point. Yeah. Everybody talks about, you know, Coach Rick just can't get over the hump. There was probably three different years that at the end of the year, Georgia probably had the best team. And, and honestly, that year, your freshman year, I think that your freshman year, uh, I that, that game at the end, everybody gave Mike Bobo a hard time, too, about that play call. And it's like, the thing is, you don't know what people are looking at, and – at the end of the day, there was two things about that play. This is this is coming from a guy who's yeah. an expert in football. I'm saying that sarcastically as well, but this is a fan's perspective. There were two things that, that really drove me nuts about hearing people criticize it. One is, if you've got a play, you're coaching this stuff, you should have a play in mind. You have all these different scenarios planned out. And if you make the play, they're a hero, right? Things happen during the course of a play. One of which, which is the second thing, that was a freak athlete and knocked that ball down. There was probably only one or two players in the country that could have done that at the time. It just it, it just happened. But my gosh, man, I think that was a difference between Alabama and Georgia during those years was I think we got wore down at the end. You could probably speak to this. But he's shaking his head, guys, yeah. better than I. But it just felt like they were so deep yeah. that they, they substituted and they didn't have any drop off. Where um, and that was one of the things, honestly. If I'm being honest, and I and I'm I'm a coach Rick defender, we never really were two, and maybe three D, right? So yeah, the way <coughs> Alabama recruited then that that was what set them apart. You can see it in that game. Uh, our very very good defensive lineman got worn down because we didn't have the rotation that the Alabama guys had, they and, and it hurt won us. Won the big. first three quarters for sure. Yeah, so that hurt us at the end of the game. But also to your point is. Uh, while I'm very thankful and fortunate, I was able to start every game as a freshman. Um, it's funny now for me to go back and watch a game from my freshman year and be a little bit disgusted and then watch my senior year and be like, oh, okay, I improved. And I was, you know, this is, I, I was better than that freshman year, John. But um, I, if I would have went to Alabama, which I am glad I did not, I would not have started. I probably would have redshirted, had a year in the weight room, and I would have had a a, ch- a chance to develop and, and, and play a little long further down the line. But um, so I am thankful that I played as a freshman. Um, Georgia's didn't have the depth at offensive line at the time where I ended up starting as a true freshman in the SEC um, on the offensive line. Uh, so that's something that that is, I think, what set Bama at apart. Georgia that was a play away. Yeah. From the national title. There's got to be a lot of pride in that is the reason why I say that. There's, he, there is. I mean, I, I understand. Yeah. And I love that perspective, too. You don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And then as you see yourself, you're like, oh, man, that's embarrassing because of what you know now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and, and offensive line play especially. I mean, and skilled guys, they, they develop over their four years, too. But it's even more so in offensive line. The position is so technical. Um, and, and, and when you're trying to move, you know, a 22-year-old man as an 18-year-old Kid or man, it's, it's, it's a challenge. There's a big difference between 18 and 21, 22, mm-hmm. isn't there? I mean, there is, yeah, especially in their college strength training program and with the experience of playing. Um, I don't know that uh, the average fan, including myself, to be honest, would really think about that often. There, there, these freshmen that are actually starting, especially in the SEC, that's they're special. It's big time, and I think about um, 
Andrew Thomas was a guy that came in and played for Coach Smart and started as a true freshman. And if you want to laugh, put on Andrew Thomas's freshman film and my freshman film, and it's, he's light years ahead. The way he came in from his, the, his high school coach was fantastic. It was also Jamar Sawyer's uh, high school coach. Um, hmm. Some of these guys are just so gifted and have some of that coaching at the high school level that helps them out too. Um, but Andrew Thomas as a true freshman was a, a baller. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, some of these kids that come in and start as freshmen, it's a, uh, it's a testament to their athletic ability and then um, just their development and the coaches at, at their schools as well. So I'll be mad at myself. I didn't ask you this question. Um, speaking of levels and maturity and, and the difference between, you know, high school and in college and particularly in the SEC freshmen and seniors, you played two years in NFL, mm-hmm. correct? Yes, sir. Um, so you go up there. Was it Washington? I was in San Francisco my San rookie Francisco. year and then Carolina my second year. Okay. All right. Well, then I was way off base. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> you're good. But um, obviously, at the time, you're following that stuff because like, hey, yeah, I took shots of that guy, you know, whatever. Um, what was that like? Because obviously, there's two different worlds. Mm-hmm. It's, it's unique. So to the point we just talked about, as a rookie, it's similar to being a freshman. Um, there's a lot to learn and there's vets who know a lot more. And so there's a lot of uh, tricks of the trade that, that you learn and, and you learn them from the vets. But the dynamic of the locker room is so different because in college you're doing your whole life with these teammates of yours, practice, um, games, film, school, tutoring. Like you, you live with these guys in dorms or off campus. So you're with them all the time. You're 18 to 22. Nobody's married. There's a rare exception. Typically, right. Nobody's married. You're hanging out, you know, on in the spring on the weekends, you're all hanging out together. But what's interesting about the NFL is why that locker room dynamic of um, that, that, that you can't replicate in the real world is still there. And it's the guys. It's different because like my rookie year, I went to San Francisco and Joe Staley was all pro left tackle. It's going to be a Hall of Famer. It was his 10th year. He's got a wife and two kids at the house. So, you know, after practice, it's Joe's going home to be a dad and it's with his family and this is his job it's not hey you know like in college it's like hey where, where do you want to go grab dinner and what are we right. going after that's not there um so it's a different dynamic and it is people like to say it's a business and it is that's kind of evolved down to the college game a, a little bit now but it is i mean there's uh, 53 spots on that roster there's there was nine practice squad members then i think it's a little more now um so it is a business and and you the, the coaching demands are – the expectations are probably a little higher, but the coaches aren't – if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, it's, it's yeah. not as much of, a, you know, chewing your butt out. It's really? your, your job. I mean, there's yeah. some coaches in there, and it does happen for sure, but if you don't do your job, you're going to get fired. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so different from college. Next and up. Which, yeah, which some guys thrive in. They can do they – can, they can handle that and thrive yeah. in it. Um, some guys, it's so foreign to them, and, and, and it takes them too long to realize that, 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 that they, have to, they have to take ownership of, of what they're doing. So you're over here southeast. You go all the way to San Francisco. Yeah. And you said it, you're a rookie, so it's like being a freshman. It's like, you know, uh, you know, it's all new. Like, you know, trying to absorb and take in so much, not just the football, which I'm assuming is like light years, but also the environment. So what does – you know, a 22 year old kid yeah. do, I mean, so practice is over. Everybody's going, to, is that, is there any structure around that at all? I li- so when we, when you first get out there, there is nowadays with the rookies and, and um, what about that, you? Like when you said nowadays, you're like talking about what, what your experience what, was as well? Nowadays, meaning when, when I was playing, I think it's still this way now. Okay. Right. Um, they do the, so you get drafted and the guy, they own the, the free agent sign and, and all the rookies come in before everybody else. And then, the rookie class has these weekly call them development meetings, but basically it's, it's each, each team has a department where they're in charge of trying to bring the rookies along. Okay. And thankfully um, San Francisco is light years ahead of a lot of other um, organizations and um, they invested a lot more in their guys and players and took care of the guys a little bit differently than some other organizations. It's been a little, so it was a positive experience for you. It was so, it was positive. I loved it. I've never been to the West coast and, uh, the team is now actually in Santa Clara, a little little south of San Francisco, South Bay Area. Um, so after practice, it was – during the season, it was, you know, grab dinner at the facility. I'd go home. I'd be wore out, and I'd get dinner, 
watch some film, maybe play some video games. I was out there by myself. Um, That's you know, what I'm getting at. I mean, you're kind of isolated in a way, yeah. right? Yeah, but it is cool. So, so you do have your few, you know, like as I was in office of linemen, so other office of linemen or rookies, there was two other guys that got drafted and then uh, one or two other guys that were on practice squad. So we would hang out. Um, and do stuff together. And then, um, funny enough, Jeff Driscoll, who was a quarterback at mm-hmm. Florida and transferred to Louisiana Tech and did well there, he got drafted around the same time I did to San Francisco. And um, we hit it off. So in the preseason and fall camp and, and summer OTAs, we would uh, we had similar interests. So we would we had the, we were in California, so we were like, let's see California. So on the weekends, we would uh, we'd rent a car. And we'd go, we'd go up to San Francisco, or we'd go see the Redwoods. We'd go do different things and experience oh, it. That, that was awesome. The Redwoods. It was so cool. Yeah, it was so much stuff that I mean, the life experience that I had out there um, was something that I would have never gotten, obviously, if I, I didn't get drafted out there. And I, I fell in love with that area. Um, I don't think I would ever want to live out there. It's, I mean, I am born, raised in the southeast, and I love it here. But um, it was so much fun. My, my now wife, then girlfriend, she would come out and visit. And we, we, one weekend we went up to, um, Napa Valley. Um, Aww, my parents would come out and visit. And so I, so it was cool. Cause whenever someone would be able to come out and visit, there's so much to do because all my friends were in the East coast, Southeast. So we'd go up to the city. So it was a, it was a cool experience just to get to see San Francisco and that the West coast area, um, and experience it because that, I, I mean, you Maybe probably I would, would not have made that trip had you uh, not been drafted. Yeah. And me and my wife talk about it all the time about when we're going to get back out there for a visit. Um, so hopefully one day in the future we'll uh, get a Napa Valley and San Francisco trip in. So you all started dating here in college, right? Yeah, so we were friends. So my wife was a gymnast at Georgia, and we were friends um, all through college. Similar friend groups, knew each other. We didn't start dating till December of my senior year. Uh, okay. So we, we started... Uh, talking was the term back then, you know, like November and, uh, started dating. Um, and then I, I did my pre-combine training in Alpharetta. And so we were dating through all that. But the cool thing is we knew each other. You were friends first. Yeah. So it was, it was was unique. So we we really knew each other and who each other were before we started dating. Um, so we dated, um, all through my NFL career. And then I, uh, retired, which is a funny term to use for a 24 year old person. Um, I retired from the NFL the summer after my second year and um, I'd already bought the ring and I was proposing. And so it was actually, we had already moved back to Athens for me to finish my degree and, and then proposed and um, got married and now we're here. Got a rug right now too, right? Yep. So we got a two year old boy, Weston, and then uh, my wife's actually pregnant with our second. Uh, oh, boy. wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So she's doing so how July. how long is she? She's doing July. July. Okay. So All right. 26, seven weeks, somewhere around there. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. So, I bet your parents are too. Yeah, oh, they're pumped. Um, this will be their Nathan six, has seventh grandkid. Nathan has three. Oh my gosh. My older brother's busy. three, and my little brother my little brother's two. Jeremiah has two? He had twin girls. Nathan has twin boys and a daughter. So they yeah, they got their hands full. I'm thankful to be doing one at a time. I was just gonna <laughs> say, John, uh... the, the ultrasound for this uh, for our second boy coming when they said there's all right, there's a uh, one good healthy heartbeat. I like <laughs> gave a sigh of relief and the ultrasound tech looked at me, it was like, Were we all expecting something else? So I was like, Well, there was a little bit of a concern. Um a concern's not the word to use, but there was a little bit of a thought that it might be yeah. twins after my brothers. Um but we're we're just doing one at a time over here. I, I love that you said concern though, because it really was a concern. It really was. The yeah, way. I have a lot of respect yeah, yeah. for parents of uh, multiples yeah. after watching my. I can watch it from a distance. I can be yeah. uncle. Yep. Right. That's, that's right. That's funny. No, I didn't know Jeremiah had to wait because he um, he was over here at the Woodlands for a while, wasn't he? Which is yeah. where we're recording. Now. Yeah, he was a police officer here at Athens Clark County, and now he's over um, with the Sandy Springs Police okay. Department. So him and his wife live over in Smyrna, and okay. their daughters are like three or four months old now. So it's it's wow. fresh. Yeah. Okay, so that may be why I didn't yeah, it's new. touch space. Okay, it's new. all right. Yeah, yeah. Man, your parents must be like in, in heaven right now. Oh, yeah, so. they love it. We're, we're, we have a, a family beach trip in a couple of weeks, so they're excited. We'll get all the cousins together. I can't wait to see the pictures. I'm sure we'll yeah. media. Yeah. So listen, this is a Athens show. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that we love doing around here is talking about Athens. So this is my Athens. John? What is your what's your what was your what's your favorite thing? And I know there's so many, and you don't have to pick one if there's not if yeah. there's more. But what's your favorite thing to do in Athens, or what you love most about Athens? I, 
so I'm a the term foodie gets mm-hmm. used a lot. Uh, there's levels to that as well, but I enjoy a great meal, as does my wife. Um, so the restaurant scene in Athens, it's, it's, it's Athens is a small town, obviously, and it's a college university town, but um, there's so much here. And one of those things that are here are great restaurants. And we have a choice of all the different restaurants we want to go to on date nights. So that's one of our favorite things to do is to go out to Last Resort or Five Bar, Chuck's, or even... Um, so this is all downtown. You're yeah, these are all downtown. downtown. Yeah, this is great. There's, um, man, it's driving me nuts. And I can't remember the name of it. My little brother put me on it. Um, do you have any police officer friends? I know where to eat. Yeah. And uh, so he told me, he's like, there's this Mexican taco joint. Um, is it downtown? Out, it's or outside it? of the loop, like on okay. the Commerce Road, maybe. And it's uh, it's like an old converted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's next to a gas station, like a Waffle House yes. metal house. Yeah. I actually had a guest on the show, Jan Plan. Tacos she, La Playblaze, maybe? Yeah, something like that. I wish I could remember. I've actually been there twice. Yeah. And it is not, you wouldn't drive by and go, I, I need to go there. Yeah. You have to be told. And it is, I, I agree, the best. So you have been there. Oh, yeah, I've, to. oh, yeah, I've been there. So places like that we love too. But I always say if you go to a, what, if it's, if it's a Mexican place or whether, whatever nationality or ethnicity of food it is, if those, the people there who are serving are from that area, but also if the people who are eating mm-hmm. yep. are from that area, you're ding, in ding, a good ding. spot. That's exactly right. There was a, this is kind of on track here, but um, before I moved to Athens, there was a gas station. A, that had a, you know how like a lot of places will have these like biscuit places inside the yeah, gas station? Yeah. This was a Mexican place and the girls that worked back there didn't speak English. Mm-hmm. And you would see a line out the door of all these construction workers yeah. that they probably barely spoke English. And you're like, okay, ding, ding, ding. That's yeah. that's going to be some good food. You go in there, they would just like show you a menu and you just point. Yeah. But I, you're right. It, it's authentic. Yeah. Authentic. Right? So there's a lot of truth to that, man. Yeah. So that that the food and then the I spoke about this earlier, but just the the people in Athens, the family in Athens. So starting a small business in Athens is um, I'm very excited about just because I love the community here and, and we're we're opening our scooters over in Winder and we my wife and I now live in Barrow County, although we frequent Where? Athens regularly. Um, off of Hog Mountain Road, not far from the Oconee County line over there. Okay. Yeah. So not far at all. And um, so the scooters will be 10 minutes from my home and and Winder, same thing as Athens. Love the people there. Um, So that's another favorite of ours of, of, you know, we moved back here not realizing we were going to stay here long term and now we're here for life. Um, So now being able to invest in the community, serve the community, um, through a small business, develop um, our team members and and, and help and help people add some 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 young folks add some value um, to their careers and their lives, and, and just kind of give back through coffee, um, is an opportunity that that we're excited about. It's a second language, coffee. It is. It's like it's like people love their coffee, yeah. not just here but everywhere. So yeah. that's awesome. You said something I think it may have been off mic, but that this was your first uh, store. Yes. So do you have? Um, not to put you on the spot, but do you yeah, have yeah. plans to open You're up good. more stores? Yeah, so we, we've signed on for, uh, originally signed on for one store, and um, long story, very short here, is we had some some title issues um, getting resolved that, that that had a delay in our winder opening. And so through that time, um, one of the good things, that, a couple of the good things that came out of that time is my partners and I were able to get, know each other a lot better, um, and then also we were able to, Learned the brand of scooters a lot better, and we felt um, we felt comfortable in the investment. But uh, also, uh, scooters is growing big in the southeast, and so um, a lot of the state of Georgia has been bought up territory wise. So um, we felt comfortable with moving forward, and we, we were like, "All right, let's sign a few more agreements." So we signed three more. So oh, nice. We, okay. We have a total of four stores agreed for, um, that we have an agreement for in territory. So um, we're hoping to grow down the line. We'll, we'll um, after the big big hurdle right now is just getting winder open and, and, and getting in there and, and um, executing the operations, which yeah. falls on me, um, which I'm excited about the challenge, kind of similar to football, the challenge. Um, Got your so play yes, call now. You yeah. just have to execute. So we have a four-store agreement from there. Um, you know, the, the dream is to have those stores for, four stores open up and um, really be enjoying it. Um, 
and, and grow from there. So you can uh, get the model set and the yep, template, and then yep. get one opened up in Jacksonville. Uh, <laughs> doing business in Florida is a whole another whole another bear. Well, uh, that's the nice thing about Jacksonville, right? It's right on the state line. You get, is it you get Kingland, is it right? Yep, Kingsland, Kingsland's right north of there. Yeah, it's very. I think that's where Bryce is from, mm-hmm, right? Correct. So if he's a lot of the times, uh, him and his family. I know folks who live in the Kingsland, Georgia area. They'll they'll uh, if they're going to do something. A lot of times it's down in Jacksonville that they'll head down to. Um, so South Georgia, Jacksonville's a weird blend of folks, a large geographic area. Um, Georgia, Florida line. Yeah. So the, the Georgia, North Florida blend of people is um, similar. And it's it, you can you can easily say you're from North Florida or South Georgia and it'd be one and the same. Yeah. Same people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, this is uh, just some fun, rapid, rapid uh, questions. You ready? Yeah. Rapid fire. I think, I think so. We'll see. Book or movie? Book. Do you have a favorite genre? Uh, fiction. Okay. Uh, Don't, you, see, you, you should have seen the look on his face. He's like, I, he kind of <laughs> like, uh, fiction? I'll give a, a plug here to a guy named Charles Martin, who's a New York Times bestseller. Okay. He's from Jacksonville. And when I read his first book, I was in high school, and I didn't realize he was actually a Bowles graduate, which is where I went to high school. Oh, wow. It's and, um, sometimes. But his, the reason I made that face is um, majority of his readers are females. Um, but his books are fantastic. He, he he's great. Of the reason I love him is the, the settings that he writes in is uh you feel like you're there, um, and his stories and storylines. So it's funny as I found that actually two of my partner's wives read him. I've learned since, and uh, it's funny I've gotten to know him. So well, you're that's so why sweet, I gave John. You're so sweet. <laughs> he and what's funny is Charles himself will give me a hard time, and he thinks it's hilarious though, because um, I reached out to him when I was playing ball at Georgia, and then I played in the NFL, and he thought it was hilarious that an uh, NFL guy. Uh, he, well, he, these are his words that a macho NFL guy is reading his books because uh, when he does his book signings, it's, it's, signings, it's predominantly female Ladies. dominated. So. so since you did that, and since we're roasting John in this moment, yes. So tell everybody what your major was and, and what dominated that. That's a dream. <laughs> Human <laughs> development and family sciences, which is in the the College of Family and Consumer Sciences at Georgia. I was telling. Uh, John off mic that uh, when I got here as an 18 year old like most 18 year old college students I didn't know what I wanted to do and it uh it fit well with the football schedule and um so the academic advisors put me in there um what I quickly learned that it was a uh, a female dominated major um a lot of the uh a lot of the people in that school went on to be nurses or teachers or in social work so it wasn't a bad gig while you're in school to to, to be in that major? I was just going to say, man, either we have a reoccurring theme here with, with the female-dominated genres, with, <laughs> or you are a brilliant 18-year-old, man. I did not have that foresight as an 18-year-old. Uh, I lucked out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it served me well. I learned some stuff, but... Uh, That's awesome, man. No, I just said a bunch of chops, because when you yeah. said that, I was like, wait, what? No way. <laughs> There's, there, this is uh, they're kind of redundant now at this point. So... Um, you said you said book over movie. Like when you and your wife get a moment and you have a date night, you said you'd like to go out to eat somewhere. Is there anything else that you like to do? Or is it just pretty much just get out and enjoy the uh, Athens? Yeah, it, it's changed now with a two year old. If uh, mm-hmm. anyone out there has young children, knows. Um, but um, I'm excited to get back into some of the things we used to do as our Weston, and then now our second child will get older. But we used to love. Um, we haven't been in a while because of the two year old and, and sleep schedules. But um, we love to hike. And that was the, oh, one of the cool things being here is you're close to a lot of great North Georgia hiking um, spots. So we would, we would uh, on fall or spring weekends, get up uh, about 4 a.m., get in the car and drive to um, Mount Yona over mm-hmm. near Cleveland. And Cleveland and all that area. Do a sunrise hike before the crowds got there. And um, so that we, we like to do stuff like that. Yeah, that's um, – uh, is that in Helen? So it's it's I think oh my Georgia geography is not strong but I think it's a little west of Helen. Okay. But it's in that same county um, over well, there. You west know, just a little farther up in Clayton, you're right at the edge of the Appalachian Trail. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool too. We had some friends that um, had a uh, cabin up there. It was like literally right on the edge, yeah. and um, that place was just beautiful. And we went, you know, we didn't hike the whole Appalachian Trail, which yeah. goes all the it's way up Maine, north. Right? And, yeah, it's crazy. And there's people that do that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. How they have the time to do that, I don't know. But yeah, that's... Uh, they, they might have a, a screw loose. Uh, yeah, they might. 
But no, that's awesome. That's one of the, one of the things that we get sometimes for that answer about being in Athens is you're literally a morning's drive away from the mountains, mm-hmm. a lake, mm-hmm. the ocean. And there's just so much that you could do literally in a weekend if you chose to. That's awesome. That, being from Florida where we have pretty much one season with two weeks of maybe winter, um, it's cool to get the seasons up here. Mm-hmm. I mean, hiking Mount Yona with the leaves are changing. Oh, it's as, beautiful. as a Florida guy, it's like, oh, this is awesome. And I, I you know, those that mountain I hike might as well be Mount Everest because there's nothing in Florida. You know? <laughs> a, a little hill in Florida's a mountain. Um, but yeah, I mean, I grew up going to the beach, which I love, but being yeah. here and having access to like you said, the lakes, the mountains, the beach, it's awesome. I think Florida is a great place to visit. I mean, the beach is a great place to go to, but I, I'm with you. I, I love the idea. Of, and this isn't a shot at Florida, unless we're talking about the Gators. And the shot. <laughs> yes. um, that's the great thing about being here. You get experience the seasons and you get, again, not to be redundant, but you get to access all these different types of activities. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's cool. Is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, that you wish I did maybe? Oh. <sighs> No, I mean, not that I could think of. I mean, I did say, so Winder is where our, our store one is going to be open. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're on, if anybody out there is familiar with Winder, we're on East May Street. There's a Golden Crown, a senior tequila Mexican yeah. restaurant, and we're between there. Um, the cool part of it is if, if you're coming to a Georgia game, we're maybe five minutes off 316 if you're coming from Atlanta. Um, so we'll be open later this summer, um, whenever you're in the area. Um, well, there's a lot of folks from Gwinnett County that travel right up Atlanta Highway to come to the game anyway. So. Yeah, so definitely people, I would love for people to stop by. And um, I am the operating partner. I'll be in there being a, a barista every day and, and making drinks. So I'd, I'd love to see all um, Georgia fans and fans of the podcast and locals come by and say hello. Um, I will be um, posting updates as we open and have grand openings on uh, social media and stuff. So we'll, we'll share that on our social media as well. Awesome. Oh, that, that'd be, uh, that'd be fun. We always like to highlight, yeah. uh, especially our local guys, right? Yeah. I appreciate so. that. Um, and it's, it's been fun as um, I, I consider myself a local now. I have an honor. I'm an honorary local after playing ball at Georgia. So it's, it's Oh no. Yeah. You can, the Theus boys are, are, are <laughs> speaking of the Theus boys, is Nathan, where's he at? He's back in Jacksonville. He's so back in Jacksonville. Yeah, okay. him and his, his wife, Hannah played soccer here at Georgia and they, yeah. they moved back down there. Um, so they, they love it down there, and I know my parents love having his, oh, his three. Yeah, I, I'm I give, sure. I give him a hard time because he has um, – It's as you have young kids, it's nice to have family members to help. And so he, oh, yeah. he has their help, and I'm like, ah, I, yeah, I, I envy you sometimes yeah. with, with that. But uh, we're making it work. All right, well, we, very, very good, man. I, I appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. I didn't warn you. In fact, I'm going to tell this story as we do the sign-off here. Um, I told you we had Marshall on the show. Mm-hmm. So when we first – had the idea of the show, John, we were like, okay, we want to make this about Athens. We want to like, we want to be part of the heartbeat. We want to, you know, feel the essence of Athens. We were really going deep, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I thought, you know, when we, when we do this, we're going to highlight our local businesses. And when we sign off, we're going to have a go dogs at the end. So I, I was telling Marshall, I'm like, hey, man, I said, at the end of the show, just so, you know, it'd be cool if you join me. Um, and I'll say, hey, Athens, thank you for joining us and go dogs, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 okay. So we do the whole the whole show, we get to the end, and I kind of give him a look, and he's like, so I'm like, I get ready to go, okay, Athens, uh, thank you for joining us, and until next time, he goes, go dogs, sing! <laughs> From that Marshall. moment, go ahead. That's, that's Marshall. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent about special teamers, but they're all a little weird. And, and Marshall's no exception. I've told him that. And he is uh, he's as extrovert as it gets. And I'm not shocked at all that Marshall did that. From that moment on? Yeah. That's our that's our sign. <laughs> so I didn't warn you before we, we went. So and listen, Athens, uh, it was a big thrill for me catching up with, with John Theus. Uh, it was uh, really cool hearing this big offensive lineman talk about coffee and all the uh, intricate uh, processes that we go through. That was really a lot of fun. Or as, as your, your uh, author friend would say, an NFL lineman. Yes. So this side of you it was really awesome. Um, guys, listen, uh, if you enjoyed this half as much as I did, I know that you had a great time and enjoyed the show. And until next time, go! Okay, guys, we did it. We made it to the end of the show. Now that you've heard at least one episode, can you do me a favor? If you know someone you would like to hear on a future episode, 
you can contact us or have them contact us at podcastjohng at gmail.com or just message us on our social media platforms or on Instagram, Facebook. Just search the Classic City Business Podcast. You'll find us. One more thing. Please like, rate, review, and share. All of this really helps a lot. We really do want to connect our community to the local business owner. We believe this is a great platform to do just that. And thank you for taking this ride with us as we get to know the people behind the sign. It's going to be a lot of fun in Athens. Until next time, I'm John G. And go dogs.